Hey, welcome back to another tutorial. So in this tutorial, we're looking at the animation layers plugin. So this is a plugin that I created for a very specific use type. So of course you can find the link to the plugin in the description of the video. So the plugin is used to create layers of animation. So you can easily edit BVH files uh, BVH motion files or FBX files. It doesn't really matter. All right, so let's see how we can utilize that. So when you download the zip file, you get these files in there. So there are three plugins and you need all three for this thing to work. And you have a folder with the images in there. So just take note of where you put these files on your system so we can import them in Lightwave. So back in Lightwave, we go to the Utilities tab and add plugins, and then select all three of these and open. So plugins have been added, we are good to go. So let me load a BVH file real quick. Now I'm going to reduce the scale factor to 0.02 and then I'm going to import a motion file, the BVH motion file. Uh, let me get a walk cycle here and hit OK. All right, so this is a walk cycle, 15 frames, uh, nothing major. Okay, but the thing is, every uh, item in here, every bone has keyframes on every frame. So changing that becomes uh, rather uh, interesting. So let's go to the master plugins here and add the plugin that we've just imported. So it's called GL Animation Layers. So we'll add that, open it up, and uh, we can close that. So when you first load the plugin, because I had loaded it previously, it's going to ask you for a folder, and the folder it's asking for is the images folder so just a browse to this particular folder right here and everything will be good all right so the thing here is the bones of this character are the ones that have the keyframes so if i'm going to add uh, anything to the layers it's going to be the bones okay now if your rig is a genoma rig of course because uh, you are not animating the bones themselves, but the controls to the bones. So in that case, you have to add the controls to the layers. So in this case, it's the bones. So what we will do is we'll select the parent of the bones, which is this one right here, the master. And we're going to add that. However, the more items you add to this thing, the slower the performance because remember this is an L script so it can be as fast as a, a native uh, Lightwave plugin so just keep that in mind but there are ways to uh, control the performance and I'm going to get to that all right so if you can add if for example you're only going to change the arm or you're going to animate the torso or something like that you can select specific bones using the shift key and add those to the layer but if you want the freedom to work with any of these bones just uh, select the parent no like that just make sure everything is a child to this one and we say add layer and when we add layer here we have to say instead of selected items only we click so that it's selected items plus children and then you start typing to name your layer you can name it anything you want i'll just name it uh, something more descriptive i think uh, walk cycle okay so with that selected i think uh, we are good to go so i'll hit okay and that's loading there so now it's done. So what you notice is uh, nothing has changed. Everything still looks the same. However, the important thing is that the, the bones now contain no keyframes. 
so you can have the freedom to edit any bone so for example if i want his walk to be more uh, muscular i would simply move this bone here like so and move the other one as well like this or whatever it is that you want to uh, edit in your case all right so once i edit that you can see that uh, the animation has been added to the whole to the animation as a whole okay so his walk has uh, changed so you can animate as you wish and then when you are done because these uh this these new animations are in the timeline now what you do is you reselect the the parent no or you can select the specific bones that you've edited it doesn't really matter then you can add a new layer so this one i'm going to say hand or hand edit or something that's what i'm going to call it so since i've selected the parent i'll make sure that uh, this option is plus children and say okay so now i have two layers right there so as you can see the animation is combined as you would expect which is uh, well and good so once i'm done let's say uh, you can add as many layers as you want really it doesn't really matter it doesn't affect the performance uh, the layers can be 20 30 100 uh, it doesn't really matter so which means you can make all kinds of tweaks to your animation to your satisfaction uh, with all these layers what slows down the performance is the number of items you have added to the whole plugin at once this is why if you've got a very heavy scene simply add what you need to add to a layer so you can edit just that all right so let's look at a few more features of this plugin here so as we have done this you see that there's one layer here which i can select let me try to zoom in a little bit here so there's this one layer and there's this other layer here so and we have a bunch of options here so of course the rename uh, renames the layer in case you need to do that so the selected layer will be renamed and then mute is going to mute the selected layer so let's see that in action if for example i mute the hand edit right here if i try to play this now you see that uh, only the first walk cycle is active that hand thing is no longer active so if i mute the walk cycle as well then i get no animation whatsoever and if i unmute the hand edit then i get simply the hands moving like this okay as you would expect so let me unmute that one and then of course delete layer is going to delete the layer and the animation associated with it so if i delete the walk cycle then the entire walk cycle animation will be deleted as well same with the other layer and then there's weight curve so the weight curve here is uh, how much influence you want your specific layer to have so let's say for example this hand uh, raising thing if i click on weight curve i get this and there's a keyframe here so i can add keyframes to my satisfaction of course because this is uh, an envelope so let me try and just uh, lower the whole thing to let's say um, five or let's say 30 percent let me close that and as you see now the the animation has been updated the hand gesture is not as powerful as it was let me click that again and simply take it back to 100 percent and let me do the same to the walk cycle let me try and bring the walk cycle down to something like 18 percent and let's see what happens so as you can see he's barely uh, raising off the ground and he's barely moving there okay 
So that's how the weight curve thing actually works. So you can add as many keyframes as you want in here since it's a normal envelope. So this can be useful if uh, you want to reduce how much he's throwing his legs and arms or reduce the intensity of a specific walk cycle, even though you don't add many layers. All right, then we come to the edit layer uh, option here. Oh, sorry, click something else. So if, for example, I go to the walk cycle and click edit layer, so it's going to warn me that all keys in the current timeline will be deleted. Now, since we don't have any keys in there, that's fine. I'm going to say OK. And then there we go. So now I have my walk cycle back uh, in the timeline. OK, so now if I edit this, it's going to update, of course, when I hit OK. But there's an option to click here. If I click here, it's going to change from clear timeline keys to leave timeline keys. OK, now what leave timeline keys will do is if I hit OK or cancel, if I hit OK, it's going to update the motion, of course, but it's going to leave the keys in the timeline. If I hit cancel, it's not going to update, but it will leave the keys in the timeline. So let's hit cancel and leave the keys there. So as you can see now, we have the keys in the timeline. But what has happened is that if you notice closely here, the solo timeline is now active. OK, so the timeline has been soloed because now we have keyframes in the timeline. If that didn't happen, uh, we would be having problems here because this walk cycle will be combined with the walk cycle in the timeline, which will give a very weird animation. So we can test that by simply clicking on the solo timeline to disable it. And so now we, as you can see, this is a very uh, weird animation going on here. Now that's because it's adding two walk cycles together. So if in case you have this problem, all you have to do is go down here and clear the timeline. So it's going to warn you that all keys will be deleted from the timeline. So you can say, OK. So once you do that, the timeline keys are gone and we are back to our normal uh, walk cycle. OK, uh, pretty good. So solo timeline, of course, does exactly that. It's going to solo the timeline now. There's uh, one extra thing that uh, Solo Timeline actually does is that it disables uh, the plugin entirely. So there are plugins like uh, IK Booster that cannot work if you have a motion modifier on a specific item or a specific bone. So in that case, if you have this plugin active and you want to use IK Booster, simply solo the timeline and it's going to work. So to show you what I mean, if I click M for motion options here, you see that there's a GL layers motion modifier right here assigned to every single bone or every single item that has been added to this plugin. So watch what happens here when I click the solo timeline. So as I click solo timeline, you notice that uh, it gets ticked. And if I click solo timeline again, it unticks. So that's what's, that's what's happening there. It's disabling and enabling uh, the motion modifiers for all items in here. So that's quite useful. And then finally, bake all is going to bake all layers into the timeline so you can have a final animation that you want. So let me unsolo that and let's give it a try. So I'm going to say bake all, okay and everything has been baked. So both uh, layers have been combined and now I have a combined animation of both layers in my timeline. All right. So if you're unhappy with the baking, just uh, clear the timeline again and do it one more time. Now, as always, once I bake everything to the timeline, the solo timeline becomes automatically active here just to avoid you doubling up on the animations in here plus the animations in the timeline. Okay, uh, one thing I almost forgot is that if you select, if you want to check 
what items are in a specific layer here. Uh, all you have to do is simply right click on the layer and you're going to have this list of items that you see here. So all these are the items that are in this particular layer. Now to scroll down, simply click on the side and drag. Click and drag and you see the entire list. If you want to go back to the top or reset the view, simply double click. Let me go back here. So this applies to um, the layers as well. So if you have too many layers here to fit, they are going to exceed the view. So all you have to do is click and drag to scroll this uh, area. So if, for example, you scroll too far and you can't see where your items are, simply double click on an empty area and it's going to reset. So I think uh, that's probably everything covered in a nutshell. So if you have any questions on how to use the plugin or you have any problems with it, please leave a comment below because your feedback is important. That way I can improve. So if you are generous enough, uh, please support me on Patreon so I can make more plugins like this. I'll see you in another video.